Hey, what's up, Internet? This is Byron D Zero yet again, and I am here to talk about Man of Steel, the brand new Superman movie. Now, uh, I went to go see it yesterday. Um, pretty good movie. That's the short-handed version of it. Uh, yep. I even got my uh, little tickety ticket stub here. Um, yeah. Um, honestly, it was better than I expected. I came into the movie with low expectations because, as, uh, uh, yeah, if anyone remembers Superman Returns, that wasn't very good, uh, but I'm going to reference that movie quite a few times, uh, but we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about this movie. Now, first off, it, I got a lot of mixed reviews about this film. Some people were saying, oh, this movie's terrible. You'll like it if you're easily amused. But, you know, uh, honestly, these are, this is my general thought. Um, it felt like three different movies. Uh, the first half felt, felt like a... I mean, the first part, the first act on Krypton. Oh, by the way, there may be a few spoilers. Depends on whether or not I feel like talking about them. Uh, but I digress. Um... The, uh, the first act on Planet Krypton, it felt like a generic space movie. I mean, honestly, I know a lot of people like that part, but it felt tapped on to me. Like, you know, all the, like, eh, I don't even really know how to word it. It just didn't do it for me. All the like all the space fighting, all the creatures that you're never gonna see again. I mean, I understand this is playing Krypton. We want to get a feel for it, but it kind of felt unnecessary to me. I mean, I loved Russell Crowe as Jor El. You know, he's a great actor, and you know everyone else who played a Kryptonian, they did their job. Um, the actor who played zor I mean, not zor Zod. Why did I say that? Uh, the actor who played Z uh, Zod. You know, I thought he was... I thought he was pretty cool. But I remember sitting in the theater watching that whole Krypton party and kind of just going... Uh, kind of just... It, it was a little painful to sit through. And I was thinking, is the rest of the movie going to be like this? Uh, but, you know, it was it was a nice variation from the standard origin story where we just get a glimpse of Laura and Jor-El uh, saying goodbye to their son and their hopes and aspirations. Like, they expanded beyond that. So, yeah, I, I, I like the fact that they did something different with the origin of, with that, with that part of the origin story. The second act, uh, one interesting thing that I, they did was, they didn't really put too much emphasis on, uh, kal uh, pod landing in Kansas. It's like, once we're, once we're in introduced to, uh, him as Clark Kent, he's already in school, like, he's already grown into a kid. He's already lived with the Kents for an extended amount of time, and he has, like, he's, like, he, he, like, his, his family is already acclimated to him being in their lives. And, uh, yeah, it felt natural to me. And again, the movie took some great strides to not go the generic route and just tell the story the way it's already been done. But, uh, also, uh, one thing I noticed about the second act was they didn't just focus on the backstory, per se. They decided to, they decided to implement it, like, piece by piece. Because, uh, one of my biggest fears about this movie was it was going to be, uh, 95% backstory and 5% current day, which a lot of these movies tend to do. And that dissipated very quickly. So, uh, 
yeah, I'm glad that they, I'm, I'm glad that it was more of a, a, a flashback type of a deal, like, it felt less expository that way, like, I feel like if they just did the backstory, which would have been exposition, 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 <sighs> yeah, um, yeah, like, they only showed the flashbacks when they needed to, and, yeah, and on a side note, uh, yeah, the death of Jonathan Kent. A lot of people complained about it because, yes, Jonathan Kent died of a heart attack in the comics. But, uh, yeah, they were going for, uh, Zack Snyder was going for a more dramatic scene. He wanted it to, he wanted it to be a crucial point of development for Clark's character. And it worked. I felt the, I felt I felt that from that scene, and it was it was a very powerful scene. Like Jonathan, Jonathan chose to Jonathan, Jonathan, and uh, the rest of the kids were saving people from on an oncoming tornado, and Clark could have saved him. He wanted to save him, even though Jonathan told him multiple times, "Don't use your power in front of people. It's not it. It's just going to cause more problems." And, uh, yeah, even to that point, when the tornado was getting ready to swallow Jonathan up, he's just like, no, it's good. You got this. You don't need me anymore. It's like, he basically told, he basically was telling Clark that, like, he's taught him everything he needs to know. He can handle the rest of himself. He's a man now. And, yeah, it was something that had an impact on him. Even to the point where, when he meets Lois... He's when he's Lois, he and she discovers who he really is. She like he tells him, uh, "My dad doesn't want me to, didn't want me to reveal my secrets yet because until I was ready." And that was an important part of the film. And um, also, uh, I'm really glad that they decided not to make this whole deal where Lois couldn't figure out couldn't figure out who Clark really was. And because that's something that bothered me. It's like you're an investigative journalist, and you can't find any leads on this, on who Superman is. I mean, yeah, you're not a very good investigative reporter. You know, she did her homework, and she eventually found out who he was. Even to the point, like even like, and they carried on for the rest of the film. Like they didn't pull any bullshit. Like. Oh, I'm going to erase your memory. Oh, hey, glasses guy, you kind of look like Superman, but you're not. Yeah, but it, yeah, that was something that kind of that's always kind of bugged me about the Superman mythos. But I'm sure I'm not the only one. Uh, uh, yeah. I do have to say, Amy Adams was fantastic in that film, but she's fantastic in just about everything she does. And, um, yeah, how hot was she in just about everything she wore? Sorry, ladies. Sorry if I sound like a misogynist, but, yeah, I kind of got a thing for Amy Adams. <laughs> <coughs> uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. She really got the character down of Lois Lane. Like, no nonsense. I'll handle the... I'll do what I want. Fuck the rules. That's how Lois Lane is. She's reckless. She's all about the story. But she also she she's also very human. She's not so like she cares about the greater good. So she will always put that before getting the story. And you get that from you you get that from Amy Adams for Amy, uh, Amy Adams performance when she's interacting with with Clark. And by the way, her and Henry Cavill have a Great dynamic. Can you, yes, Henry Cavill, the man who plays Superman and Clark Kent. He was fantastic. Like, I have to say, for for someone who was a relative newcomer to Hollywood, he just knocked it out the park. He was, I think, he was the best part of this movie for me. I mean, even with all the Hollywood A-listers like Diane Lane, Kevin Costner, and Amy Adams. 
he just shined. Yes, and yeah, even Lawrence Fishburne, like, he outsh I feel like he outshined them all, because this was his moment. This was his movie. And he was, just, like, he got the character down. Like, he wasn't trying to play him like Christopher Reeves, like the way that uh, Brandon Roth did in uh, Superman Returns. No discrediting to Brandon Roth, because he's a great actor. It's just, I wish in that movie he had tried to play Superman his own way. Instead of trying to emulate the late great Chris Reeves, who did, who probably is the most iconic actor to ever play Superman. Uh, but yeah, Henry Cavill, mwah, beautiful. It was just he. You get you get this you get this feeling that he's trying to make the choice about what he wants to do as he discovers his destiny. Like. The whole uncertainty, even when he's just like traveling, just traveling the world, trying to help people. When you, you know he's not he's not the Boy Scout that you know the Boy Scout that a lot of people portray Superman to be in the early on before in the early on parts of this story. He's like he's like he's very apt to get mad about certain situations, but he never loses control per se. Like in one scene, uh, he was working at a greasy spoon out in like Midwest America, town USA. I don't know what it was, but uh, and some truckers were giving this waitress shit, and he's just trying to defuse the situation. Trucker punches him, didn't work, of course, and then he pours a milkshake on his head. You know, instead of just like, oh, ha, 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 I'm just going to pretend to be a wimp. Nope, he quits the job, goes out, and uh, launches a bunch of logs into the guy's truck. You know, that's not something, yes, that's not something that, uh, to like, the today Superman would do, because he has more self-control, and he can just walk it off. He, no, that's something that a brash young man who is very apt to losing his shit would do. Hell, that's something I would do if I were in a situation. I would be like, yeah, I know I could probably kill you. I don't want to go to jail. But I will teach you a lesson. You know, it's, it, it, it makes sense. And like, it's little things like that that I appreciated in the second act. Yeah, it was very, it like, it was all about character development. It was all about character building. And I don't feel like I, I don't feel like that was wasted at all. And then we get to the third act. The third act felt more like standard Zack Snyder. Uh it was all actiony, like boom, 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 flashy explosions. <laughs> okay, all the fighting da 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 What yeah, uh, honestly, it felt a little ridiculous, like, I, 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 I liked some of the fight scenes, like, the Theora and Superman and, uh, Nameless Drone fight scene in the middle, in the middle of Kansas, that was pretty badass. That was probably my favorite fight scene of the entire movie. It didn't feel it yeah it didn't feel the if it didn't feel tacked on it felt like the natural natural progression of things and it was probably one of the most action packed superman fights i've ever seen you know after so many films where it's where lex luthor is the bad guy so we can't do t and we can't do too many actiony scenes i feel like this was like the superman fight i've been waiting for it was two two people two people on even playing field just going at it, wreaking havoc. Just oh, it got my blood pumping. And uh, yeah, the later the, the later action scenes, uh, it was kind of, like all I can say is that after that scene, it kind of 
was it, it kind of set the tone for the rest of the film like yeah this is what the rest of the movie is going to be about and I really kind of was taken out of the experience by all those all that actiony stuff like one after another just being bombarded with it I wasn't bored with it but I wasn't yeah you know, I wasn't as enthralled by it as I was by the second act it again it wasn't bad just excessive and I know a lot of people may not agree with me but uh, it started like it, it kind of just started to lose its luster after a while especially like when it started turning into this whole uh, Superman is Jesus thing like that kind of got a little uh, I mean again the whole idea of like these multiple store these multiple types of films going on at one time it 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 it, it, stop, it really is what stops this movie from being from me, from me rating it better than I could have rated it, uh, because uh, I would have loved it if it was just a solid. I would have adored this film if it was a solid experience because each one of these plot points on their own, like they would make they would have made great films on their own. Like they're representing different genres. I feel like. Uh, you know, like I said before, first act, generic sci-fi. Second act, origin story of a hero. Third act, fuck it, we are all about action! Yeah, third act felt more like a Michael Bay film. Yeah, there I said it. Uh, and... I, uh, I, again, I didn't, I didn't hate it. I love the acting, love the, I, I love most of the action when it wasn't excessive. Uh, I like the story, I, I think the third act was perfect. I mean, no, second act, god damn it. Second act, not third. Third was flawed, uh, so was the first. But number, uh, the second act was perfect. I wouldn't change a thing about that. If the movie was just that, if they had just made it like that, I would have loved it. I mean, that is how a hero origin story should be. It's uh, like just impl just implementing ideas from the past and the present. It's, you know, it's like, you know, instead of just being like, oh, this is how, like, I'm going to sit here and tell you how this hero was born. It's like, okay, here we are. Now, what did my dad say to me that time? This may come in handy. You know, something like that. Because, you know, sometimes you need to recall something from your past in order to, in order to move forward in your life. And some people may not agree with my view on that either. And that's fine, too. But, yeah, um, honestly, I would give uh, Man of Steel a... 7 out of 10. I will be buying on Blu-ray. And don't get me wrong, I don't hate it. I'm, I'm not spoony. I actually like this movie. Uh, and I hope you, I hope more of you guys enjoy it too. I want to hear, if you've seen the movie, I want to hear your thoughts in the comments. Uh, please, I'd love to discuss this film further. Hear different points of view. And uh, next time I will be discussing my thoughts on... Uh, uh, Zuden Sentai Kyo Ryuzer and uh, Kamen Rider Wizard. Until then, this is Bardi Zero saying Ja, Matana.